Hello everyone, this is Bro S of the Halidoc Bro signing in, doing another figure unboxing. As you can see, today I have Figma 311 Haruna from Arpeggio of Blue Steel Ars Nova. Now it says Cadenza, which is the movie, uh, which there were two movies. Uh, one that was a compilation of the first 12 episodes and then 20 extra minutes, and then a brand new movie. But I just want to compare... To just really quickly, I'm going to compare it to the figure later, but I had I did an unboxing of Iona earlier, and hers is just Ars Nova DC, which is the main series from the way I understand it. But let's get her open and just take a look. I'm just going to go over a bunch of the things. I'll go over some like character stuff that I remember from watching the series and the movie. It's the side, it's the top, is the top and bottom are exactly the same. This is the other side. And the back, which, so this is how she normally looks when she's on her ship as a mental model. This is when she first runs into, I cannot remember the, the little girl's name for the life of me, but she is becomes a big part of the story as well. But let's get her open and take a look. I don't have, I know they released Figmas, I believe, of the, of the Kumas, the little bear form, because that's Kirishima, I know that much. But I did not get any of those. It's not that I'm not interested, but it's just not something that was big on my list to get. Let's get her open. So yeah, she doesn't come with the little bear. It's just uh, showed separately, or showed on the back. Unless the bear is hiding under here, which I highly doubt. But let me pull off this, very similar to the Iona unboxing. She's got a set of rings. I'll actually open those up in a little while, and we'll take a look at those. And let's get this proper part open. Let me move this back. And actually, I'll flip it around. So, like I generally say in most of my videos, I do this just in case I need to rebox it back up. Gosh, this one is not popping apart very well. In case I need to box it back up or put it back together. Um, in case I'm moving or I need to put it in storage. And this corner right here is sticking. There we go. Okay, so with this tape there, which I didn't realize at all, and there's tape here, I'll just pop that off. Well, that's my fault for not paying attention. Okay, so there's the standard bag. I'll just go over this stuff. Instructions, which I'll go over in a little bit. The stand, the hands, which she comes with only four hands, but as I know from the Iona unboxing, these are to hold up the uh, rings. Let's go over the figure itself. So this big honking coat that she normally wears. Jeez. Okay, so it's really just flat on the bottom. There's a, actually there's a little bit of a curvature, but not going to do anything. And I don't know why she has a peg hole. Oh, maybe it's to make the rings go in there or something, but this is going to stand up. I'm going to move this out of the way. That's just going to stand up completely fine on its own. The base is so big and everything, and I'm just probably going to move her head. This pop, this start just pops right out for the, for the head to go in there. So... There's really not much to her. Let's just get her out. And, and there's a couple faces, and I'm assuming those are... I'll figure those out in just a second. These little, little black things here. I'm not quite sure what those are. They look like they might go on her wrists, but I'll figure it out here in just a moment. So the character itself, she has a little plastic stopping the hair from... the paint from rubbing off. Arm joints, ankle joints. She doesn't have, like, a little kneeling pose like Iona did. Uh, do these twist right here at the... they do, they twist at the thigh highs there. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to like, and once again, I'm going to compare all of them together. I do like this pose as a pose of this. Well, she's super easy to stand up probably like this. I'm not a fan at all. Uh, it's... I understand this part of the series and that's why they included it, but it's still just kind of, I don't know, not a... not a pose I'm going to go with. And then, oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, I have the pre-order bonus. Which I'll go over that here in just a little bit. Actually, how does it stand up? Which I believe she has the table instead of another chair like Iona did. But we'll wait and see. And then I'm just going to put her off to the side. Let's get this tape off here. And we'll take a look at the faces. To start off, we have just kind of a happy, smiley face. I'll go with that. I don't know what other name to give it. And what else do we have here? We have 
just kind of smug face I'll go with. And these, I'm actually, let me open up the instructions because it will probably tell me instead of me figuring out as I've learned over time. Uh, it doesn't really tell me. Oh, that's the Japanese side, so maybe the English side will tell me a bit more. D, E, where do D, E, D, and E fit? Does not tell me. That's delightful. I'll figure them out. I'm Like I said, I'm just assuming that they're, they go on the wrist. Okay, so yeah, and you can attach the rings to her with the big coat. So that's what that's there for, because I was like, hey, she just stands up just fine on her own. All right, but let me get those little black things out, and I'll take a look at those real quickly, and then we'll get on to uh, putting the figure in poses. I did manage to get the little black pieces out. This is how they look. They're very, very challenging to see. I'm trying to actually show them off properly. What I realized is that they are actually... I'm going to move my camera a bit. They are actually the hair ties, as you can see here. And here, which I did not did not occur to me at first, but then I realized. All right, well, let's get her in some poses and see what she looks like. So this is the first pose, and not just because it's here, but this is just the first pose I'm going to go with. I'm not going to bother putting the rings around. I like, I think I'm going to like the rings just around her normal person. The only thing I want to point out about this is it's got these belts, which is nice and interesting, the big coat. But these uh, the arms also move back and forth, which is kind of interesting. But all I did was in, as, <laughs> all I did was pull off the head and pop it on here, and that's really all there is to it with this, and that's about it. So I'm assuming that there's not a whole lot of accessories because of the big coat, but it makes it a lot easier just to put her in poses and actually speed, not speed through, but like put her into poses really quickly and not have a bunch of attachments. I'm going to move on just to another one of the couple ones, and eventually I'm going to put the rings around her. But uh, let's get her, let me get the, this head, the head off of this one, moved on to some of the, uh, back onto the body to put some of these other poses. So the second pose turned out quite well, I think I'm going to call it. She looks like a, like one of the maid cafe maids in a, sort of with their hands up, like a, like paws, like a cat. I think that's what they were going for. I don't remember that much from the series, but it's what they went for. Just going to zoom in real quickly. Her, the hair ties actually ended up pretty well. You do just remove the little red ribbons that she normally has. There's two of them. I'm trying to get them both. There's two of them. You just replace them with the little black, brownish ones that they have. And she turned out alright. Once again, without all the accessories, there's really not much to her, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I actually really like that it's easy to pose her without a bunch of excess stuff. I'm going to move on to another pose before putting the rings around her. I also wanted to point out that even... Cause, so the head would be right about here, on this because I've got it on the same level as the the stand, and it kind of shows like in the series itself she gives she's made out of nanoparticles or something along those lines, and she gives part of her nanoparticles to make up Kirishima here. So she they actually did a pretty good job of making her shorter, like she gets in the in the uh, I can't remember in the manga, but in the anime series she, she gets a little bit shorter. So I actually pulled that off pretty well. Well, I'm going to move on to another one of these poses. This next pose didn't end up exactly how I wanted, but it's not bad, nonetheless. It's, like, I was trying to aim for this where she, I changed out one of the faces, which is actually kind of nice as opposed to other figmas where the hair separates. The hair is part of the faces, which actually makes it significantly easier. Here's the other face. It makes it significantly easier to, you know, put the put a face on just because a lot of them, like, that hair piece will fall out and you'll just have somebody without the, the their bangs or something along those lines that just looks really weird when they don't stay in very well. So this makes it really easy. It's just one piece. The only problem is there's a kind of a gap between each headpiece because they don't fit in perfectly like that, whereas a lot of the individual hair pieces will overlap. But that's not a, like I said, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So I do kind of like this pose, but I'm going to end up putting on the rings next. And I'll show her next like that. And one of the Yona videos, I showed how they go together. I'm going to see if these are the... Uh, like if these are taped on or if they're part of the plastic itself, I have a feeling that they are. Actually, I'll start opening while I'm talking. They're probably stickers again. They're a bit of a pain in the butt to get apart. I'm going to need to cut it. But I'm going to get put these on, and we'll see how she looks. And since it's probably pretty easy, I'll actually probably do both. But I'll probably just put them on this with just this, and you know, then I can switch the head back and forth. So I've been playing around with this for more than a couple minutes, and... Let me change my lighting. It's been kind of a pain because even though it goes in her back and I, I flipped it around a couple times to try and get a good angle, but these always, turn her by her head, 
these bottom ones always seem to rest on the sleeves of the coat, which is kind of annoying. And then these other ones also have the problem, like I did with the cow, where they don't wrap around in a perfect circle. So it's kind of irritating, to say the least. Um, it's just, I can't, I don't know, it's just they don't fit on there very well. But those are the rings themselves. They've actually got quite a good amount of detail, like similar to Iona's, but except for her middle one, which is just kind of really sparse. Although you can kind of see the hexagon honeycomb design. Uh, and then the other thing is, yeah, if you keep messing around with them, I can see these the stickers peeling on the outside uh, where they fit together. Uh, but I'm going to try one more pose. I'm going to sit her down with Yona. I'm actually going to do put her the main body into the into the rings. I'm going to open this up at the same time and build it. And well, actually, you know what? I'll, let me switch my lighting. I'll just open this right now, just to make it easy and cut down on a little bit of time. Let me open this up. So does she, yeah, she has a big table. So this should actually be pretty easy to build and I can just put the chair to it. And from what I understand, the next release should be uh, Takao and she has uh, another chair. So there'll be two chairs sitting there. She doesn't, I don't know if she comes with a teacup, but this one doesn't. So she'd be on the outside or whatever. But let me get this, let me get the form switch and I'll build this and we'll take a look at that all at once. So I finally got everything posed like I wanted to. This took me quite a while. The table, so I've got Iona sitting here, and just for size comparison, I, and I put her into, I put Haru Haru, as they call her, as the little girl calls her in the series, I put Haru Haru here into the rings, but it really is designed for this, the coat portion, because it doesn't, like she bends forward, I can't get her to bend properly no matter what I do, and even if I keep pushing her forward, it still doesn't look right. It looks really strange. I tried flipping it around a couple times. It's actually kind of frustrating that it didn't turn out as well as I thought it would in this form, but I think they were only aiming, like, once again, I think they were only aiming for this. Uh, I also really want to go over quickly, because she only came with four hands, so the other two hands are, are hands that grip. The other one is kind of that, uh, it's not focusing very well, it's kind of the splayed hand. Uh, but these two hands grip, so I mean, I guess I could take some of my little armory stuff and put some weapons in there, but that's about it. Like, she doesn't have anything to normally hold. I'm just going to go over one last thing. Move Yona away. So I've got her little saucer from the previous video. Uh, but this was a pain in the butt to put together. Like, all these little, there's, there's distinct shapes for each one, and I've glued them because they kept falling out very similar to the chair. Now the chair, move Yona off, the chair is completely glued together as well just because the little pieces would fall off really randomly. I think they're supposed to be glued once you finally get them because they they have the big they have the big cutout portions. And as you see I've cut it all out. I've got my twist or you know little pair of cutting pliers. But the table turned out alright. I actually do like it as somewhat I, I'd have to compare it to how the how it looks in the series itself, but it looks pretty darn similar, so so far, I'm going to have a nice little, uh, nice little chair set, or, you know, table and chairs like they have in the series, so. One last thing I want to go over before I finish this up is, as I was starting to put the figure back together, and I actually closed up the, or I put the figure back in the packaging and everything, when I realized, I looked behind the packaging itself, like, they have general backgrounds on the, back behind the, this, and as you can see, we have what is the pillars and whatnot from the series itself. And I, I, for reference, this is Haruna's. I pulled out Iona's just to see. There's really nothing to hers. It's just a blue background, which isn't bad. And they, like, you know, you can cut them out and pose them in certain positions. But this is very distinctly from the series itself. And let me see if I can get it in full picture. So they have the pillars that go all the way up and fold out like that. And the floor, like, that is clearly meant to be flat and kind of where the table, ah, kind of where the table sits. Doesn't want to stay flat very well, so I'm going to try and do this real quickly. It actually looks kind of cool uh, without having to put out a full set. I'm just putting that there for reference. And actually really, if it keeps falling down, I'd have to tape it and whatnot, but I, I don't like necessarily ruining the backgrounds, but this is really distinct. This is really interesting the way they did this. But I just want to go over that one last thing. 
Uh, like I said, they're probably going to have one last chair for Takao, so she can sit there as well. But this is Bro S of the Halidoc Bros, unboxing Figma 311. Haruna from Arpeggio Blue Steel. Thank you guys for watching. This is Bro S of the Halidoc Bros. Peace out.